Welcome back everyone. Uh, we are work working on um, the intro to the organic reactions. We used a couple of reactions, especially the common uh, reaction between strong acid and strong base, hydrochloric acid and hydroxide respectively. And instead of just uh, based on memory, um, we uh, tried to analyze the reaction pretending you have only these two and you don't know what the products are and we found the base highly unstable electron pair in the lone pair of the sp3 hybridized orbital of oxygen attacking the partially positive hydrogen and pushing the electron away from it because it has a maximum uh, capacity two electrons for the first shell hydrogen and that makes the hydrogen uh, bound to the oxygen by sharing electron because none of them, oxygen, hydrogen, is too uh, electronegative compared to others so they share although the bond is covalent, it is um, a polar covalent. Then you have electron jumping on chlorine and making it negative so essentially, it looks like you formed this bond by breaking this bond. But like I said, a bond dissociation energy is not sufficient. First, their uh, energy difference is not that great. So more emphasis must be on um, OH minus turning into the Cl minus because ionic um, compound must have first bond dissociation energy considered second electron affinity considered and that electron affinity is uh, much greater in difference compared to the bond dissociation energy difference also the ionic compounds um, have very big amount of the solvation energy so in doing organic, we uh, first give our attention to those um, ions first, then we consider bond dissociation energy or uh, hero formation for each compound. So it looks like the electron extra one from the oxygen pushed significantly, conceptually, qualitatively, and jumped eventually to the chlorine and then we say which uh, especially atom of the OH and the chlorine which atom is stabilizing the extra electron better then we said the um, the bigger atom the chlorine takes care of it better also bond dissociation energy here is a smaller because their uh, size is too different compared to the oxygen and hydrogen so breaking is uh, easy and forming here is a much more stronger bond also the anion there is more stable therefore the reaction favors forward and you have an exothermic reaction going through the transition state we'll talk about briefly later so that much heat of formation heat of reaction out of this come out so in the re in the chemicals you have that much less energy that came out as a heat energy that's what we measure so a uh, few more things oxygen has a potential to be base and chlorine had potential to be base with the unstable electron but we choose more unstable one like oxygen more charge in a small even small atom mm -hmm. also uh, the way we find out the acid is not just by positive charge sometimes neutral or negative ion slightly negative ion not ion sorry the negative side can be attacked depends on whatever you have over here so how do you find out you can try simply by imagining the electron coming to the chlorine and if you push the uh, electron to the other side, which is the hydrogen side, you can imagine that over here, instead of chlorine negative, you are forming H minus negative. 
you can imagine is the um, H minus stable one. First, as a stable as a chlorine, no way because it's a first shell, third shell, plus one nuclei, plus seven after shielding. So chlorine is more um, has much greater electron affinity and it stabilizes extra electron better. So in this case, uh, chlorine made the uh, reaction exothermic because it's more stable than oxygen minus. However, H minus compared to the O minus, you can see O minus with the more nucleus charge and the greater uh, size of the uh, shell with the extra electron. And this is more stable. So, uh, you know, you can imagine in this case, OH, the hydrogen minus hydride is much more unstable. So the endothermic case, so the uh, equilibrium constant is ratio of the, the products, this concentration times that concentration divided by concentrations of reactants. That should be less than one. And that should be greater than one. If you plug that in into the Gibbs free energy greater than 1 makes overall positive, multiplying positive uh, values with the negative sign, delta G becomes negative. So when Gibbs free energy is negative, it is favorable exothermic, right? And opposite for this. So in short, base is better electron donor out of many, you can choose the one that gives away electron better with the most repulsive electron and the least attracted high potential energy one. And when you do that, we consider first size. Second, we have done electronegativity uh, based on the nucleus charge. So same applies to um, acid, but how do you find the acid? In this case, you have uh, obvious one acid, but say you have uh, multiple of them, you have to consider in a given reaction. You have to prepare for that kind of situation. So in general, by definition, acid is something, sorry, release H plus in a way and create conjugate base when you compare it to another acid, release the same proton and the conjugate base. So better acid is the one that makes more H plus. But whenever you make H plus, you make conjugate bases, same amount. So which is better? Say this was a better acid, stronger acid. That means you make more of H plus than the, uh, um, this compound, this acid, but whenever you form H, you form the conjugate base. So the concentration of hydrogen is the same as the concentration of the conjugate base. And also qualitatively, well, you cannot compare these two because they're always the same. So you compare these two to tell which acid is more acid. So remember, the acidity is judged by the conjugate base. So which makes the H A prime more stronger acid? That's when you have the conjugate base more stable in potential energy, meaning this has a system of bigger size and more attraction. And which means the conjugate base is a weaker base. So that's when you have the same stronger acid makes the more weaker and stable conjugate base. So how do you know that is more stable and the weaker base? Well, that's anion. So it goes back to our discussion. The anion becomes important again in organic. It's not a gas. It's in the solution. It's not homolytic cleavage. You have uh, electron affinity considered. So size, then more nucleus charge for the better electronegativity. 
then we said also in electron affinity more than just the size we have to talk about resonance unfortunately you don't have a resonance here so you don't have to worry about I cannot show you yet I'll talk about it later but let's remember whenever you judge the stability of a certain compound especially uh, ions you talk about size electronegativity and electron affinity with the resonance these are supposed to give more attraction for electron and uh, less repulsion among the negative ions so acid base reactions is the essential elements um, in understanding organic reaction. That's why I'm showing these inorganic uh, acid-base reactions. And you also know the acid-base reaction is predicted using the value called the pKa. The pKa is negative log of the um, equilibrium constant of acid. For example, roughly speaking, water has a pKa of 17. HCl has pKa of negative uh, 8, for example. So which one's more acidic? Just like a pH, the lower number, even the negative, if it is, even more acidic it is. So the water, which is a neutral molecule, has a potential to be base or acid. Has a 17, much greater number compared to the HCl, so it matches with our memorization. HCl is a very strong acid with a negative value of pKa. So, meaning the acid has a big potential to generate H, plus, making conjugate base Cl minus, and that has to be very stable. It is stable because of the size and the charge. Compared to this acid that force the reaction go backward so water dissociate and become OH minus and H plus is donated but that's only about 10 to the negative 17 so much greater acid better acid make the reaction forced forward so roughly speaking the equilibrium constant is about you know 17 minus minus 8 so about 25 so it's 10, it's uh, 10 to the 25, so uh, 10 to the 25, so it is extremely big K value. So reaction favored for the extreme between strong base and the strong acid. So uh, although organic reaction not always attack hydrogen, but organic reaction have a different uh, aspect. Organic reaction involved attack, meaning giving electron from the base to acid, which is hydrogen also, but carbon as well. So organic compound has a complex structure, like I um, warned you earlier complex structure due to the you know the uh, ability of carbon making multiple bonds and various uh, structures by rotating around single bond freely without any forcing here is a different example this one similar to the previous case you know has the greatest um, charge on the oxygen so this might be the strongest the base and you look for the acid here and say typically you find the hydrogen with a partial charge and you try to give electron then you see the the shell is holding too much if it just accept electron you have to consider that okay don't draw the arrow uh, by habit but please um, count electron um, on the target. So in this case, you have to give away electron. Then 
um, you have the same water formed, but the conjugate base will be this. Then looks like um, negative charge is on the oxygen again. So are they same? So you have reactant and product having same energy, meaning the K value, the ratio of the reactant and product with the same um, stability, you should have same concentration and one. Well, if you look around uh, the structure where the highly repelled electron, there is some difference here. You see the carbon here due to the oxygen here, it's partially positive. It's able to attract electron. An electron also prefer to be shared if it's possible. So electron has a property to be delocalized and shared for the resonance. If they are coming in this region, then the electron here in the pi bond, not the sigma bond that's more stable, less stable pi electron moves out to the oxygen and you come up with a new arrangement of electron pair. This oxygen having double bond and the carbon having now single bond with the oxygen and the oxygen gained the electron so negative the other one lost electron so negative losing electron making it neutral then you have a CH3 uh, same so these two are the hypothetical extreme uh, allocation of electrons on you know either end oxygens but in reality, they are average of these two. So they average them out, and you have partial charges on both oxygen with a some electron density, not even on the oxygen, but all over the uh, bonds. They localized. So this way, electron fields, less repulsion, having greater shell, right, as a functional group, and having three atoms holding electron more attraction, like we said before, resonance make the uh, functional group better in the electron affinity. So they find more stable arrangement of electron this way in resonance. So compared to the original uh, base, this conjugate base is more stable. Therefore, it's not the case you lower the energy of the product so the reaction suddenly became exothermic then the K value will be greater because you get the more stable product more than reactant which is less stable so there you have an exothermic reaction considering the stability of the anions but bond dissociation wise as you see you broke the OH bond you made OH bond anyway the bond dissociation energy is not as big in most of the cases, like I said. So let's see if it fits with a pKa value, which is a good guideline for the reactants with the hydrogen as a target. Okay, pKa can be good guideline where H is the target. There are more reactions, I mean as many reactions in organic reactions with the carbon as a type target. Also, uh, the pKa is measured always in water solvent. That makes the pKa again not as useful in organic reaction, but it can give us some idea. Um, yeah, also the H is not always the target, so that's limitation for pKa value applied to the organic reaction. That makes the organic tough. So organic reaction is different. Okay, one might say, why can't we attack this positive acidic? Um, carbon. Well, you may not get as good conjugate base if they don't. The uh, 
of reactants in the solution they randomly attracted and collide this way then instead of breaking sigma bonds you break a pi electron away from incoming repelling electron that is only oxygen then let me show you the reaction path this way I hope this is a good exercise for you because in most of the case in organic reaction we have to try a couple possible paths before you decide which is better so this OH here is right there and electron you know uh, flies to the to the carbon and they're not tossing away because carbon's pretty electronegative so they are sharing more electron toward the oxygen carbon there and oxygen is now negative with a single bond and this OH is still there and the methyl group is here that's intermediate so that is the product so the product compared to the other product from same pair of the reactants the oxygen is holding negative same as this guy but that electron was able to be spread and came up with the, this well spread resonance structure and here you cannot do that because if you try to spread this electron to the positive carbon and try to share then you must break one of those bonds because the carbon end up having too many electrons if this electron come in think about the Lewis structure putting the lone pair three of them but uh, leaving the two pairs and put one there that's going to be 10 electrons so not possible unless you lose a pair it's not the carbon taking electron it's not as good as a conjugate base and uh, these are better so let's give away then you basically reforming double bond and keeping OH losing the OH you go back to this pause the video and check that out then you kick out the OH with a pair of electron additionally that makes oxygen neutral gaining electron thus it becomes negative and you basically go backward I mean from here you go back to the reactant and they have a similar uh, basicity both are unstable limited electron density on one oxygen there's slight difference yes so you know you are, you are uh, preferring this one because this is more stable so this is basically this case and that is this case so with the enough heat energy you can freely explore all the surface but when you try to come back from this guy attracted guy and the spread repelled uh, less repelled guy which is this the electron like to stay here they don't want to move away from there so it stays 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 the more you bring it stays and accumulate them and it builds up as a main product when you have a two equilibrium so um, this is how you choose a better reaction among couple possible reactions considering the stability with the sufficient heat energy if you limit the heat energy there could be difference as well anyhow so much side tracking this um, acidic acid ethanoic acid with the two carbon the pKa value is about um, 5 4 point something could be 3 point something but roughly speaking 5 water 17 so obviously 5 is the one generate more stable conjugate base more than the water generate its conjugate base so reaction favored by how much 17 minus 5 so 10 to the 12 still is a big number the so equilibrium constant favors forward very much so yeah you know uh, pK value is still useful because your target is still hydrogen and uh, a solvent is still water looks like it
Okay, since you have to, um, let's look at our um, potential energy diagram. From now on, we're going to use potential energy diagram more frequently and more in-depth, gradually. So when you compare these two, you know, um, the uh, Cl minus is compared to this conjugate base, and Cl minus has a much more st uh, greater stability. It has a huge size. So um, the bond dissociation is energy. If you uh, compare this one's a slightly about you know a couple kilocalorie more stable. So you know I would say they are about the same. So about the same two reactants, making more stable chlorine, somewhat more stable chloride and more, somewhat more stable acetate. Say if there was a case, you create very unstable um, conjugate base, such as minus on the carbon. Then you can come up with the, uh, you know, energy curve with a big exothermicity. And here with the acetate, somewhat less exothermic. And if there was another, you know, uh, imaginary reaction that created endothermicity, like we said before once, Hammond postulate. By the uh, Professor Hammond, we can uh, imagine the uh, information structure and properties of the transition state, not only the stability of the reactant and those products, so we can predict K value or exothermicity and so on. So the goal here is you don't need to uh, remember every single compound's pKa value, you can't. And even you do, it's not as important as useful because organic reaction, quite a bit of reaction happening on the carbon, not hydrogen, and happens in the organic solvent, not the water solvent. So you have to learn how qualitatively compare the reactant stability and the product conjugate base stability for the how much product how much product you form. But transition state is giving you another unique ex aspect of the reaction which I'll be talking about soon. But anyway, um, as I showed you here, it's usually when reaction is more exothermic, the activation energy is uh, less. As it's more endothermic, you have a more activation energy for the transition state. And you know when you have activation energy changing, you are changing in a given temperature, they're changing the reaction rate. So higher the activation is, the slower, because it's a negative power, slower the reaction rate is. So reaction takes place slowly, so speed, rate, speed is not right, right word, but anyway, rate, reaction rate is a slow with a high activation energy. Also, because it's endothermic, you form small amount in concentration. When it's more exothermic, you create large amount. And since the activation energy is less, you have fast reaction rate. And I want you to distinguish the rate, how fast or slow, and how much. Here, faster one forms more, slower ones forms less. It comes, you know, uh, like seemingly uh, similar uh, manner, but it's not always the case. So it's important for you to tell them apart. K value is about how much um, which 
see is how much product you get over react. It's, uh, it's about amount. But activation energy is about how fast. And they are different, and they can go against each other later. And we have to control conditions to choose. Do you want, like, do you want more uh, product from faster reaction, or do you want the product that's more stable or less stable? You know, you can choose those things. So not only the, the energy related to aspect of reaction of y axis, I want you to pay attention to the x. This is the distance between uh, you know atoms that are involved in the reactions. For example, in this case, it's between oxygen and hydrogen and hydrogen and chlorine. So as you move from the reactant to the product, you are shortening the distance between H and OH that are two different reactants and you're increasing the distance between H and Cl so say you came midpoint meaning you have this brought pretty close to the H but not quite as close as this uh, regular sigma bond yet and also you brought, brought, broke this bond but it's not free from each other like the product so somewhere in between, that's the transition state. And since they're not close enough, they didn't form bond yet. They're making small degree of uh, sharing, but not quite yet. And uh, due to the charge and the, you know, the uh, electron capacity and potential energy on the hydrogen, some electron densities are moving on to the chlorine and they're breaking bond. So since you're breaking strong bond, you are making the overall associated uh, structure of the two compound as a one, which is a transitional complex, becomes unstable. That's why energy keeps going up. So what I want to say is, if the uh, conjugate base is very stable, like this case, when OH came just uh, you know in vicinity small amount of the electron moving on the hydrogen makes this bond broken enough and chlorine feels stable enough already because it has ability to be stable from then on any more approaching of the OH to the hydrogen will make the bond more broken completely and making more bond uh, which is a more stable bond so the energy start to go down so that point where the formed the one and the broken one is about the same in terms of energy you call transition state so you have transition state of this first reaction with the Cl over here second reaction with the uh, less stable but somewhat stable acetate over here what does that mean in terms of distance we say more stable exothermic chlorine formation reaction has an earlier, quicker transitional state compared to the less stable product. That's because in order to kick this out, which is less stable, you have to give more electron to the hydrogen so you can push away more and you break more bond. Then you consider, okay, I broke enough bond and you pushed enough so this weaker less effective guy move away electron more by coming closer to the hydrogen so you need to work toward the hydrogen if you are OH more to reach the equally stable broken and uh, uh, form the bond so when you form very unstable conjugate base this guy OH minus must get really close, almost like a, a product, meaning almost like this. You have to give all you got to push out the guy who's reluctant to get electron and feel as uh, unstable as uh, OH minus in the complex. So the complex is like you have OH, varying distance depends on whatever the guy that's leaving, which is a conjugate base.
So early transition, low activation energy for more exothermic, better conjugate base, and the other way. And this is a Hammond postulate. So if you can imagine the uh, transitional uh, state location on the X and the Y, you can apply the structure and uh, um, polarity to further consider solvations or you know, interaction energy like eclipsed and staggered in the transition state that raise or lower the uh, activation energy and that changes the course of the reaction very much in the organic reaction. Okay, with the Hammond postulate, let me move on to the one example of organic compound. So when you have organic compound, you have a target that has your conjugate base. Let me write it as L, and let's call that as your leaving group. is uh, your conjugate base. In general, anything you try to make a bond with hydrogen compared to the carbon, this has higher bond dissociation energy. So any base any atom making bond with hydrogen, they have a stronger bond than carbon. So, you know, this uh, conjugate base will break bond homolytically easier with a carbon. So if you put OH, let's put it this way just for now. And it's obvious this is your base, and the carbon is, just like hydrogen we looked at before, it's acidic. Not the one with the negative charge, partially, because this gives electron, the electron goes to the carbon. Carbon is slightly more electron negative than the hydrogen, but yet it's not stable enough compared to your conjugate bases. Those are normally, you know, halogens with more electronegativity or size benefit, or electron on the oxygens with the resonance, things like that. So we'll, we will um, intentionally choose the conjugate base, you know, the stable ones to promote the reaction better. So it's always better to choose, you know, carbon than the. Uh, electronegative partially negative group as a target. So the carbon receives electron and you push away electron from it if the carbon still has three more electron pairs. Then it looks quite similar if this was a hydrogen, you know, when that was a hydrogen. So OH form a shared electron here as a sigma bond, carbon is still there, and the leaving group, like a chlorine, is kicked out. So there you have a stable conjugate base with a good electron affinity with a you know, relatively less um, bond association energy. So it looks quite similar. Then why pKa value is not as good? in predicting organic reaction. Here comes the difference. So let's see the difference of organic reactions. You know, besides the electron affinity, because we are not doing homolytic cleavage and so on with the ionic reactions. First, carbon is not one atom. It has multiple attachments. So instead of you have this kind of um, you know uh, compound, say the yellow ball was hydrogen and the rest was a group or atom, and some base comes and give electron share a form a bond, then too much electron repulsion on the hydrogen, and you 
push that electron away and this is a conjugate base supposedly stable we as we looked at and this hydrogen now is bound to some group no but carbon case say the blue ball is the carbon we looked at this kind uh, you know many times before I hope you know the structures well by now then say here you have a living group a good conjugate base when you give electron to then here is your OH okay there are four sp3 hybridized uh, orbitals and uh, one of them bound to hydrogen in this case other three are um, lone pairs in sp3 and when you attack now you realize you don't attack this way because here you don't have any electron you're not giving any electron electrons are like you know this and this so you know the drawing up here is not correct it should be drawn this way so hydrogen is pointing you know pointing down or up tilted with angle so it's going to be like this also when you approach the carbon what happens you're bringing the electron pairs in the bond like the bonds I'm holding when I bring these close enough to make a bond I bring these two sticks electron pairs even when it's a staggered if you compare please make up your own model if you compare the distance between this and this bond in staggered even when I turn this bond right single bond it's almost like a conformational analysis but when you compare it to the regular conformational analysis case let me compare I don't know the screen can hold everything so you know this case here versus the regular case here what's the difference see here um, in the regular case you have uh, two bonds pointing actually away right pointing away but here let me see this way here they are like this is pointing that way that also pointing that way unlike the previous case this would have been that way so they are even closer meaning if they want to form bond they are feeling more repulsion in the transition state so the transitional state of the organic compounds have a greater activation energy so the transition state is not just bond the dissociation energy and you know uh, those early transition and late transition thing but also you have to consider so-called steric more the steric effect becomes more serious in organic chemistry if the carbon center here has more carbon attached because carbon attached will have you know, it comes with the more spikes and the spikes can have a more attachment so that creates a lot of uh, you know uh, hydrogens blocking the path so the OH is not like a, you know, a linear form like this, like I just showed. It's going to come sideways, not this way, but sideways. And if the OH is not H, but if that was, say, it's not OH with a, you know, one hydrogen, but if that has uh, oxygens on, uh, hydrogens are, sorry, carbons are on it, then the base oxygen minus with uh, three uh, lone, lone pairs with uh, carbons can cause more steric issues so steric becomes a big issue in organic reaction also if electron comes this way let me redraw some attachment here right 
static, but also because they are repelling each other, going through the transitional state when you move along the x-axis, this will have to flip going through the flat with the oxygen and leaving group. If you go closer more this way, this get closer, pushing this more toward that way, and that makes the leaving group completely gone. That leaving group come out, but carbon now, sorry about that, carbon now has oxygen bound, and the three things flipped. So there is a configuration change, a structural change. So, steric becomes important in the reaction of organic compound, also structural change. Not only that, sometimes the reaction takes place not this manner, but the leaving group just go away and you create three sp2 orbital with a positive charge on the carbon with the leaving group alone. Then, also depends on what you know you have attached here whatever the charge can have a rearrangement sorry rearrangement I'm rushing I'm sorry or depends on what you have here the stability change so rearrangement make the structural change or the stability change make the potential energy going up and down, right, as a product. So if there was a reactant, if the potential energy can change, they change everything. They change the activation energy, meaning the rate change. And uh, if the stability change, then not only the rate, but the you know, amount of the product you form change, and so on. So there you have the type of intermediate causing more complication due to the rearrangement of this or the stability as well. Okay, I hope you pause the uh, video and uh, you know recognize what I have here. It's two chloropropane, CH3, CH3, CH with a Cl in the middle, and uh, OH minus as a base. And this is a good acid because the conjugate base is a chlorine minus. And if you analyze this compound, you know, this um, carbon has a partial positive charge. And these hydrogens are slightly partial positive, not as much, slightly. So those two are the good target. And yet, we don't know which one's better. This is the hard part that I'm going to make a point here before we, I, uh, we um, go over more in-depth uh, relevant stuff in next video. So, the base try to give electron to the carbon, then push away this one. Then again, chlorine is, chloride is your um, stable conjugate base, it's a leaving group. Then these three groups are, like I said, flipped. There you have the product. If you have this one attacking the hydrogen, then this electron must move away from hydrogen because it has, it's going to have four electrons, too much. So it feels plus charge here, right? Electron here, next door you have a positive charge and they like to be shared. Only if you can kick this out. So you kick out, yeah, going stable in negative state, so you can remove it through the transition state. Then you bring the electron here, forming pi bond. If you imagine pi bond without the chlorine and the hydrogen, because you are moving the electron away, there's no more bonding. So the carbon has only two and the three bond. 
and the pi bound is not hybridized to 1, so sp2 it becomes. And uh, right away, you know, sp2 means flat. This one as well, you lose a chlorine having pi, only 3 uh, sigma, no lone pair, so sp2 as well, meaning you have a double bond. Then this has only two hydrogens flat way, and the carbon has a two flat bonding with the hydrogen and the carbon. Then carbon is sp3, that's your product. There is some stability difference between these two. They are same. So the stability difference factored in determining the product. Because if you have a more stable product, you're going to have a more exothermicity from the same pair of reactant, right? So that should factor in. So whichever is more stable. So that maybe is important, but like I said, the uh, electron affinity is major factor. So roughly speaking, they're similar. There's a little difference, but not very much. Then what determines whether the reaction goes this way, H target, and the C target? The main reaction uh, factor is First, we have to consider bond dissociation energy. You know, you break the same bond anyway, forming same type of uh, similar type type of bond. Although, O make a stronger bond with the carbon than the uh, car stronger bond with the hydrogen than the uh, carbon, like I said. So, I think I forgot something over here. You know that sigma bond pi bond, or here you made a sigma bond, so you know uh, which favors um, somewhat by the bond dissociation energy. However, uh, next important factor is steric. If you have these hydrogens start sticking out, then this one will have hard time to make a close approach to make a bond, you know. It has uh, so much repulsion. So the activation energy for carbon target is getting higher and higher. It could have been low without the carbons attached to the central carbon. But with, with the more attachment, one, two, increasing me or even three, then the activation energy becomes very high. Without changing the product stability. So it's already doesn't follow Hammond due to the steric. So steric breaks the Hammond postulate for the transitional state prediction. And Instead of attacking carbon, you see attacking hydrogen has no problem with the steric. It has a benefit of making, you know, OH bond rather than OC bond. And breaking in uh, wise, uh, you can consider in forming this, you break CH bond and the CCL bond. For this, you break CCL and that's it, you don't break CH bond. So, you know, you can look up the uh, bond dissociation energy and calculate them, but their difference is not that big. So what makes the reaction change the course is not really bond dissociation energy, it's the steric. So if you put some big group here, like a couple carbons, then there is too much steric to attack carbon. It's going to be way too high. So reaction will be so slow, even the product stability is not as different, the reaction becomes slow enough, impossible. 
So attacking here is preferred and you're gonna react with a low activation energy and you end up getting this one. So with steric without steric you change the course of the reaction. The target change H or C depends on steric. Yeah, so there is a moral complication coming from the, um, the, the main chain uh, organic portion. So in later few uh, videos, I'll show you more specific uh, examples and explanation on the role of the um, organic part. So until then, I hope you have a good day.